Hi again. My name is Rebel and I'm the Rebel Reseller. And today I'm going to be doing the second half of my Watts sold, which will be last weekend, April 28th through the 30th, Friday through Sunday. I had a good weekend. Friday was kind of, mm, but then Saturday was amazing. It's like eBay turned on my store and I did double what I normally hoped to do on uh, for daily sales. And then Sunday was typical. But it's just been just that way. And it's going to continue to stay that way, I think, for a while. Because I think, really, eBay's working on stuff. And, you know, for me personally, as long as it doesn't go into fourth quarter and affect my fourth quarter sales, fix whatever you need to fix. Just go for it, eBay. Y'all, it's a lot of work to get ready to go on vacation. We are leaving Wednesday morning as soon as we can get out of the door. Um, and then we're going to be gone for a week. We're going to go to Connecticut to do Robert's and RJ's second degree black belt tests. And then we are shooting over to New York to visit with my son and his family. And then we'll be heading home. Uh, but it's a lot of work. We're trying to get all of these e uh, videos ready so that while we're on vacation, we'll have them all scheduled for you. Plus, I'm trying to get a lot of listings processed so that while we're gone, I'm going to be able to continue to list daily, still do my end and sell similars, um, and just kind of try to keep the algorithm moving. I'm choosing not to do time away this time. I had too many issues in December when we did time away. Um, things that I had, I had never had problems with before. So this time, what I plan on doing is extending my handling time. And especially those first few days, I'm going to send anybody who purchased something a note, just making sure they're aware that I won't be shipping until that following Wednesday, um, just so I don't have any issues. And then it's going to be a pain because then I'm going to have to go in every day and, you know, change the handling time so that, you know, I don't want to keep it seven days and it be all strung out into the following week. I just want to make sure everything's going to get shipped Wednesday. But when you have 10,000 listings, it's hard because you can only do 2,000 at a time. So it, it's just, it's when you're dealing with your um, phone and the hotspot, because I never log into public Wi-Fi ever, ever, ever when I'm going to log into my platforms. I just don't want to run any chance of there being a problem with internet and all of that stuff. Ah, I don't know. Just nope, nope, nope. But it gets clunky when you're dealing with your hotspot on your phone. So, but I just, I don't want these issues. I want to keep doing my delete and sell similars. I want to keep sending offers um, and counter offering. And I had problems with all of that last time that if I counter offered and they accepted it, my handling time wasn't my vacation time. And luckily I have kids still home, adult kids that were able to go in and ship my packages for me. But I'm going to try this other way this time. We'll see how it goes. So, all right. I have sales on all four of my platforms again. Um, if you're new to my channel, I list everything on eBay. So I have over 10,500 listings. And then I cross list using List Perfectly to Etsy, Mercari, and Poshmark. I don't have that many listings on the other platforms, but I'm trying to build up so that I'm come fourth quarter, you know, I sell a lot of toys during fourth quarter. And the more I have on all of the platforms, I'm hoping it's going to, you know, make myself even better for the fourth quarter. But we'll see. We'll see. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to get ready for your vacation. First is Mercari. Mercari's just been so down for me. It's such a disappointing time for on that platform. But I sold this gray elephant lovey it did not have its tag google lens didn't help me figure out who the manufacturer was so in these situations make sure you use as many keywords to describe your item as you possibly can for me um this lovey also had a satin side that had polka dots so i made sure to use those keywords it wasn't listed very long and it sold 
Amakari though for ten dollars. This is a Robert thing, pretty sure. This is Party Light. It was a Buddha tea light holder. Paid a couple of dollars at an estate sale. Um, had it cross listed to, I think Mercari and Posh, but it sold on Mercari um, for twenty two dollars. All right, these are Levi's five of five four five. I put jean shorts, but technically I think those are capris. They sold for fourteen dollars. All right, these are Ariat sandals. Um, paid, I want to say two or three dollars for them. Sold for twenty dollars. And then this Aiden and Anai. I know this has been listed probably four or five years. I thought that that was a brand. Um, I guess worth picking up. I'm sure I picked it up at a consignment sale, probably paid $3, $4, something like that for it. But I think I've come to realize it's, it's mostly just the lovies. Um, I haven't had very good luck. I've picked up this brand a couple of times and it's just really, really long tail. But it sold finally though for $28. And then Etsy. Let me tell you a story about this one. Um, this is a Fisher Price movie viewer with three of the movie cartridges. I did pay up for this because I was going to keep it for myself. Um, I paid $35 for it. It had more of the cartridges. I think I list I possibly listed some of them separately, but I did keep my favorite ones up there. I have gummy bears and I can't see the other one. But I kept those cartridges, and I'm pretty sure Shannon was the one that sent me this um, movie viewer up there that's behind Oscar's, Oscar's, behind Grover's hand. Um, and I opted to just keep that because this thing is huge, huge. But sold this um, for $89.95. I got a message this morning, and the buyer was like, I'm not sure. I see the pictures in your... Um, listing show that you know it's you can see the cartridge pictures on the movie viewer but I cannot get them they're very very fuzzy just was very apologetic but was wanting a refund because she couldn't um, get it to work properly let me show you I did give examples here there was a Bambi cartridge so there's um, flower and then this was one of the other cartridges just to show that it was working but she couldn't get it. So I sent her back a very nice message. It was like, have you tried to adjust the picture using the, um, you know, the little knob to, what is that word called? Dang it, I've forgotten the word, Robert. I sent her a nice message back and Robert helped me um, word it, but had she tried to use the focus adjuster, the little knob, to, you know, get it back into focus. And, you know, I didn't want to, you know, make her think that I was being rude or anything. Because I've had a sale one time where somebody sent me a message saying, you sold me a toy that doesn't work, yada, yada, yada. I want a refund immediately. And I was like, um... The listing stated that it didn't have batteries. Did you put fresh batteries in it? And she sent me back a very apologetic email saying, I didn't realize it didn't have batteries in it. So, you know, you try to, you know, focus in on making sure they've done everything before you do the refund. Um, and she sent me a message back like, I had this toy as a child and I forgot. Because technology today, children don't have to turn something to get something to focus in or anything you know it's you know technology is much better than it was in 1977 so she was very apologetic and yay the sale went through i don't have to worry about a return and a refund but just you know be polite but try to help them troubleshoot before you know you agree to returns and refunds all right, then eBay. 
This is another Robert thing. I picked it up at an estate. It was just a binder and it's full of um, just stuff about the so so Saint Marie. He's told me this several times. So Saint Marie, it's you know, has pamphlets, cassettes, slides. It sold for $35. Since this is take two, I had taken that down just so I could show you some of the inside of it. So it was just stuff like this. Boat tours, you know, advertising. Look at that cassette. Slides. Just free parking stuff. More slides. Just I typed out. Remember all of us typing stuff out like that? Just very interesting stuff. And y'all, it wasn't listed very long. And it sold for $35. Wild Republic. This was a butterfly plush. 12 inches tall from 2016. Sold for $8.24. I had... um put a 15% off sale. I've been kind of trying to change things up a little bit. I run sales twice a week. I do a sale Monday through Thursday, and then I do a sale for the weekend, Friday through Sunday. Because I have more than 10,000 listings, you can only do a sale for 10,000 items at a time. So this particular weekend, I decided to do 15% off everything that was $9.95 or less. And then I think I did 10% on stuff up to like $40. And then I did like 7 or 8% for all of my higher dollar stuff. Just kind of seeing how things work. You know, we're always trying to figure out what's the best way to handle our business. Um, I think this time I started a sale this morning and I'm just doing, I think, 10% no, tw like 12% on $9.95 and 10% on everything else. Just kind of mixing it up. But I can't, I have to run two cells. I think sometimes I do clothing alone as one cell and then everything else is another cell. Um, but that particular weekend, um, it was a 15% off sale. So it sold for $8.24. This is an Adidas Predator men's shirt, size small, $17.71. I sold a lot of clothes. For me, it's a lot. And funny thing is, I have started watching several YouTubers who specialize in clothing because I'm trying to familiarize myself with more of the women's clothing, what to be looking for, things that are higher dollar. Because, you know, I'm the type I like to go into a yard sale flip through stuff really quick. I don't want to stand there and do research. I want to start knowing the brands to pick up right away. So I've been watching and the other day I saw one that had said Sundance and it clicked with me um, when I was processing this because a lot of this stuff we have purchased over the last two years because we are so far behind in listing clothes that, you know, we could have purchased this a year ago. Didn't even know at that time that it was a really good brand to pick up. But this Sundance women's shirt, so extra large, sold for $29.41. Silver jeans, fluid suki straight, sold for $17.71. I'm not sure if I said this at the beginning of the video because this is round two. Um, but if you're new to my channel, I don't do free shipping. So when I say something sold for $22.45, um, it's the buyer did pay additional for shipping. And you can usually see my shipping right here. I do flat rate for anything under a pound and calculated for everything over a pound. All right, Carter's Just One You, White Rabbit, Holding the Lovey, um, sold for $13.45. I pick up most Carter's unless it's just not in great condition. Chickpea. I have found a couple of these different animals. They almost always have this little ribbed um, fabric on them. I am pretty sure that they went with a blanket. I never get them with a blanket because, you know, I'm picking them up at the yard sales and bins and stuff like that. Um, but I've done really well with them. This particular gray puppy dog sold for $17.95. Belzira Sheer Women's Top 
sold for best offer of $12. Russ, Home Buddies. This one's name is Quackles the Duck. I talk about the Home Buddies a lot. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I have the little mouse over here. I've mentioned him. He's one of the ones that sells for quite a bit more than my bread and butter. Um, but even this one's not bad. Bread and butter, though, $9.86. But he's little. Polo Ralph Lauren denim shirt sold for $22 best offer. This is Animal Alley, a white tiger plush from 2017. It's sold for $15. Lane Bryant Curvy Fit Women's Jeans sold for $19. I've been really trying to pay attention to the Lane Bryant's, Chico's, Talbot's, um, trying to get some of the um, larger women's sizes. I think those are the ones that several YouTubers that I've watched have said to, you know, keep an eye out for. <sighs> this... I thought it was going to do much better. This is Pottery Barn Versailles Dinner Plate. I had five of them. Um, probably paid a couple of dollars for them at a yard sale. Somebody sent me an offer of for $6 each for all five plates. And I just decided to go ahead and um, sell, you know, take the offer. I have found a lot of times when we buy sets of dishes, I see sell a lot of the accessories, the salt and peppers, the gravy boats, the creamer and sugar and platters. And I end up a lot of times with the plates and, and cups and saucers. Those are just seem to be the hard sells, especially when you're selling them sing, singles like I tend to do. So when I got that offer, I just decided go ahead and make that set done. This is a youth hoodie. It says Virginity Rocks on there. I think it has something to do with a YouTuber or somebody named Danny Duncan. I just got all the keywords from other listings. Let me see if it had that on the shirt right here. It sold for $13.51, but this little red marking that I do here keeps me from being able to look at the other pages. And I wanted to look at the tag, so I'm going to take that off. Yeah, Danny Duncan right there on the tag. Um, so definitely keep your eyes out that for that. I should have cropped that picture. Sometimes I crop the pictures and then they're not cropped when they go through. And sometimes I just forget. But I should have cropped that picture down a little bit. Great courses. There was a time, once upon a time, I bought a bunch of them at the Goodwill Bins one time. And I was selling some of the sets for $30, $40, 50 I did amazing with them. And I, it was one of those things I thought to myself at the time, if you find them, pick them up. Well, I found some more of them probably a couple of years ago um, at an estate sale. They were like a dollar a disc. Um, this is a three disc set, but they don't sell for as well anymore. It's probably one of those things from this point on. If I find them, I'll definitely check the comps. It's not just going to be an automatic pickup. But these three sold for $17.95. They were the early American um, history discs. Columbia men's khaki shorts sold for $13.21. Chico's fabulously slimming women's jeans, $16.81. Y'all, another issue. A lot of times when I'm listing non-clothing, I just, I have my listing that I'm using. And then if it's first class, I use one listing. If it's over using priority mail, I have a different listings. And as I'm listing in the mornings, I'm just doing sell similar, sell similar, sell similar. I have found that when you're dealing with Things like this, socks, um, bras that I don't normally list, and video games, it automatically defaults the condition to new. And I didn't catch this one this time because I don't normally list things new. 
even if it's in the package, even if it has the tags. It is just a choice I make if it's vintage and I have found it at a yard sale, in a state sale. To me, it's pre-owned, um, even in the packaging. And I'll just state, you know, appears unused, excellent condition, any of that stuff. But I didn't catch this one, and it sold very, very quickly. It, I know in the grand scheme of things, it's not important because this was in the package. But I have sold video games before where I say, you know, the, the case is discolored and it's like new or new because I didn't catch that thing, that, that condition to change it back. So it's just something... Be, be, be mindful when you're listing those types of products that you've got it in the right condition. But $24.95, and this came from that huge lot of vintage plush that was hanging from the ceiling, that sale. Um, I just happened to find this on one of the, the bookshelves and grabbed it. Brown Bear Plush, 16 inch. Tag was faded, didn't know the manufacturer. Um, you just have to hope, you know, that somebody is going to be able to find it just based on the, the basic keywords that I had there. Sold for $12.10. Hasbro Play-Doh Flower Molds. These are from 1994. I picked them up at an estate sale. I want to say I paid like 50 cents or a dollar for the three pieces. Um, they kind of got set aside. I haven't had them listed very long. And they sold for $20.20. Words of wisdom, when you're dealing with these type of Play-Doh molds, they have to be marked Hasbro or Play School in order to use the Play-Doh, D-O-H. Otherwise, if it's like Rose Art or any of the other brands that are very similar to these and you use Play-Doh with them, um, you need to use the D-O-U-G-H, Doh. Um, and if you have a mixed lot of them, like the, the cutters and the scissors and all of the accessories, you still need to be mindful not to use PlaySchool or Hasbro in your title because they are one of those companies that, you know, everything in that listing needs to be Play-Doh, Hasbro, or PlaySchool in order to use Play-Doh. Just words of wisdom. I had somebody send me a message that... The, the, that scenario, she had a bunch of just the, the molds and the, the cutters and just a huge lot. Not all of it was play school, and she got a Vero on it. Kelly Toy Knit Rattle Plush, 16 inch, sold for $9. Lots of bread and butter. Wildlife Artists, I do well with Sloss. A lot of them are bread and butter. This one was 15 inch, $8.46. Koala Baby. This one had that stitched belly. So make sure you look for words like that to put in your title. That's going to make it distinct from any other monkey plush or koala babies. Um, but this one was pretty good, $26.95. Carter's My First Doll. I pick up a lot of them. Um, they tend to sell very well for me. There's Carter's Prestige, Baby Starters. I think Eden has some. Um, just a lot of the different brands make these dolls. A lot of times they have a rattle in them. And they just seem to be a toy that mamas come looking for because their child has grown attached. You know, they're usually small. Um, so I just tend to pick them up. Anytime I find them. The, the thing that I didn't put in this listing that I have started doing is when you have a doll like this, try, if you've got enough room for the keywords, put brown hair eyes or blonde hair blue eyes because a lot of times parents are going to be searching by the colors, the, the, the features of that doll, trying to narrow it down to the one they're looking for. Jellycat Gray Elephant Plush. This was just more of a plush holding a lovey. Um, I hadn't seen one like that before, but I love Jellycat, and I'll pick up all of them. A lot of them can be bread and butter, but this one was a little better. $20.65. Cute Cat Plush. 
Ikea Brown Bear Plush. This one was a surprise to me. I pick up most things Ikea. Um, I did, I have a problem with, I think, the elephant. For some reason, it will not let me list them. At one point, and you might want to go look this up, there was a recall many years ago on some of the Ikea plush. And for some reason, that elephant for me keeps getting pulled into that recall warning that eBay sends you. Um, but it wasn't there. I've gone and looked. It wasn't a part of that recall. But I, I'm i not even going to chance it. You know, I get the warning one time when I was trying to list it. So I will never list the Ikea one on there anymore. But this one, $35.95. And since then, I have found another one that didn't have the tags. Um, and I've just listed it separately. Villaroy and Bach. I guess that's how you say it. I picked up two different ones of these at an estate sale pretty recently in the last month, I think, maybe a little bit longer. I paid up a little. For me, um, I paid $6, I think, each. The first one sold very quickly. I want to say for about $48. And then I have this Easter Bunny one that was like a cup holder. I kept getting a lot of $20, $25 offers, but I held out. And it did finally sell for $40. This Tamagotchi Virtual Pet. Robert picked this up at a yard sale one time. I think he'd gone off to the post office and saw a sign and stopped. Picked this up for a dollar. Um, the thing is, is I listed it back then, probably a year ago maybe. And then one day I was pulling something and I noticed it sitting on a shelf and was like, why haven't I noticed that in all of my end and sell similar? And come to find out it had been dropped. I don't know why it was no longer listed. But I relisted it and it sold probably within a month for best offer of $50. There are others. This one was sealed in the box. There are others um, that sell for a whole lot more. But they have different colors. And this was just kind of green and yellow. So I went ahead and... Let it go for 50 Let's get into some of the higher dollar ones. This was Bunnies by the Bay. I'm pretty sure this was in one of my um, St. Louis Benz bags. The thing is with this, I could not find any comps for a 20-inch monkey. None anywhere. I'm pretty sure I would have gone to Worth Point. So I decided to throw a big price on it. For me, $89.95. I think when I went in, I tried to find like the highest priced anything that had sold by Bunnies by the Bay and then went even higher than that. Um, and it's not been listed very long. I got a $60 offer and I just decided to go ahead and list it because, you know, that's probably where it, that seemed reasonable for this size plush. Um, I could have maybe picked a price and tried to auction it. I don't do very well with auctions. Never have, unless it's like very, very, very unique, you know, or like a Sasha doll or something like that. So, you know, that's, that's what I would suggest to you. Either pick a really high price on something that you can't find any comps, but you need to make sure you've checked Google and Terapeak, Worth Point if you have it. Um, but, but go high, go with your gut and go high, either auction it or then you can just list it at a high price and see what kind of offers you're getting. This was another one of those surprises. I'm pretty sure I picked this up at an estate sale. Probably paid a dollar for it, maybe. But I, I love vintage plush. I'm going to pick something up that's unique, unique like this. Humpty Dumpty egg shaped plush. The brand was Plakey. Um... It did have some discoloration. I just put that in my listing that I'm leaving that to be dealt with by the buyer. Um, again, there were comps that were up. I always try to go a little bit higher just to account for offers and, you know, the final value fees, all of that stuff to take all of that into consideration. I got a best offer of $68, so I just went ahead and accepted it. And then my best sale. 
and it's a viewer sale so thank you very much sherry sherry saw this in the video that we released about the house that we were able to go to the estate company let me go to the house to look at all the vintage plush um i bought i spent 458 dollars that day on just tons of with tags clean practically new a lot of it plush and this was one of them this is a norfin troll doll 10 inch his name was george he was 1982 made in denmark look at the tag look at the tag just there was one comp i want to say 50 60 dollars that didn't have the tag wasn't in as good of condition so um, I really appreciate Sherry. She bought it right after she saw the video for $99.95. I've still got another video I'm about to work on, um, a brand video, so it should hopefully be out next week for you guys. We've done well. I'm picking characters again, so get ready for some new characters to be looking for at yard sales and thrift stores when, you know, you're out and about, um, but got to get all this work done. Got so much to do for our trip. Make sure we're going to try to figure out as soon as we know itineraries, you know, when I'm going to be free, when I'm going to be at the different bins I plan on going to. I'll try to keep everybody posted. I'm hoping to do a meetup. Maybe we can do lunch or dinner or something like that. But, you know, it's like two days. We're going to be two days in Connecticut and then like two and a half days in New York and then all the travel time. So well, I'll try to keep stuff in the Facebook group and in my community page on when we're going to be where. So hopefully I'll get to meet a few of you guys. Hopefully. All right. Let's get to work. Bye.